Hey Tank Watchers, Jack Byer here with NASA Spaceflight. Welcome to another weekly Starship update. Starship serial number 8 is sitting on pad A with three Raptor engines, a nose cone, body flaps, and it's almost ready for a static fire test ahead of its 15 kilometer test flight. But before we get to all that, a word of thanks to Mary, aka Boca Chica Gal on Twitter. If you don't know who she is, she's a Boca Chica resident, an NSF team member who relentlessly documents every single bit of Starship development that she can. So everything you're about to see was captured by her. Thanks, Mary. First up, after three nights of testing, Starship serial number eight successfully completed a fuel pre-burner test. Then, in less than two hours, they recycled and did a full static fire with three Raptor engines for the very first time. The testing flow seemed really smooth. The fact that they were able to recycle so rapidly after the pre-burner test and without sending anybody to the pad has got to be a good sign for all of us hoping for a successful flight for SN8, aka the Ojo. Even though Elon tweeted that the static fire was a success, a few of us noted an audible metal groan crunch sound I'm going to call a grunch at Raptor shutdown. We've heard this sound before, actually. With seal number four. And with Starhop. Both had engines replaced after static fires featuring the same sound. Starhopper originally had Raptor serial number two, and then that was replaced with Raptor serial number six. Serial number four originally had Raptor serial number 18, and that was replaced with Raptor serial number 20, which was ultimately the one that you know. I wonder if maybe a hose popped out or something and we're just seeing an uncontrolled vent. If it was methane, it'd be igniting in the flare, correct? Uh, I don't want that to be- Oh! Whoa! Whoa. Whoa. So when we heard the dreaded grunch sound at the end of static fire, some of us were wondering if they were going to have to replace one or more engines. And sure enough, they did. I should note though, that this could all just be a coincidence, as I think SN5 made the same sound, but didn't have an engine replaced. Raptor serial number 39 was lowered out of serial number eight, and confusingly, at the same time, Raptor serial number 36 was delivered to the launch site, but it was not installed. Instead, the two Raptors were carted back to the build site. Why would they do this? I have no idea. There's some speculation in our member discord that perhaps serial number 36, the new engine, needed some parts off of serial number 39, the engine removed after static fire. But it could have also just been that they didn't have enough time to install a whole Raptor engine on serial number eight before nose cone installation got underway. Speaking of nose cone installation, the nose cone for serial number eight was fully stacked at the build site and rolled out to the launch site where they did some tests on it before installing it on serial number eight and thus, a starship was born. This is a starship. Look at it, it's a starship. This is a huge deal. I mean, just look at it. We're going back to the moon and we're going to Mars. We're going to Mars, y'all. We're going to Mars. We're going to Mars. We're going to Mars. Ah! Ah! Seriously, I don't have words to describe how this makes me feel. It's amazing. I guess that's a word, but whatever. In these trying times, it's so nice to have something to be excited about and something to look forward to. This is the vehicle that could very well take us back to the moon and will take us to Mars. Just look at it. The simple act of putting a nose cone on this vehicle changes everything. It looks like a rocket now. And because of that, mainstream media and the general public will become involved and interested like never before. So get ready for questions from friends and family about what the heck SpaceX is doing in South Texas. A fully stacked Starship on pad A also helps us get a better sense of scale for the full Starship launch system. If Starship itself is 50 meters and the super heavy booster is 72 meters, that makes the full stack 122 meters. Starship isn't even half the height of the full vehicle and it's already a behemoth. It truly is hard to wrap your head around the scale of this. Next up, the mystery nose cone was painted white, it got an American flag, and it got the NASA worm, Team Worm. 
We think this is the beginnings of an Artemis human landing system mock-up, but it remains to be seen how detailed this mock-up will be. Will they put a crane on it, like in the renders? Will they outfit the interior? How much detail are we talking here? How about throwing some of those crazy raptor-derived Metalox thrusters on? We don't yet know how far they plan to take this mock-up, but it should be noted that the other two teams competing for the Artemis human landing contract have completed high-fidelity mock-ups. So now maybe it's SpaceX's turn. Okay, it's that time of the weekly update where we speculate about dates. Now, there are some road closures starting in Boca Chica on October 28th, but they have not yet filed for a temporary flight restriction for a 15 kilometer flight. So what are these road closures for? Most likely, SpaceX is going to want to conduct another static fire test. Don't forget, at the tip of the nose cone is the LOX header tank, and those header tanks contain the fuel used during a landing burn. It's probable that SpaceX wants to conduct a full static fire test from the header tanks in order to simulate Raptor startup during freefall. So that means potentially serial number eight could fly as early as the 30th. If they static fire on the 28th, it's successful, they get good data, and they immediately file for a TFR. That is a pretty big series of ifs. So I'm still thinking early November for serial number eight's 15 kilometer flight. Next up, Mary caught some imagery of serial number nine's aero covers on site and being prepped for installation. What's an aero cover? They are the aerodynamic surfaces, the cover, the machinery, and mounting points for the body flaps. After aero cover install is done, seal number nine will get body flaps. What happens next? We don't know. It could get wheeled to the launch site, maybe put on pad B and pressure tested alongside seal number eight before being made ready for flight. Or it could stick around at the build site and serve as a backup in case anything goes wrong with seal number eight's 15 kilometer flight or the tests leading up to it. At this point, again, we'll just have to wait and see. Really? Can you, can you not right now? Please? I'm trying to, I'm trying to do a thing. Next door to serial number nine in the mid bay, SN10 stacking is well underway, but that's not all. Serial number 11 is also seemingly ready to be stacked. Here's its common dome freshly sleeved. The machine that builds the machine is in full swing in Boca Chica, and I'm starting to wonder if we're going to see another mid-bay type structure spring up just for prototype storage. Next, a tent has gone up at the launch site. What for? I'm not sure, but I don't think it's the presentation as many people have speculated. In fact, Elon recently tweeted seemingly that there won't be one this year. On Saturday, it looked like they rolled half of a double wide mobile home inside of it. Next up, scaffolding was spotted inside the high bay. What for? I don't know. But speaking of the high bay, Elon recently tweeted that at the very top of it, there will be a 360 degree glass bar with a name to be determined. And everyone promptly started suggesting names. I like the high bar, the space bar, and star bar. But I'm mostly curious how all of that glass is going to handle a super heavy launch. And last up, if you're thinking of going to Boca Chica for serial number eight's flight, please be safe, maintain social distance, wear a mask, and don't put any locals at risk. That's it for this week. Thank you for watching and thank you for your support. If you haven't already, hit subscribe and smash that like button so the robot overlords know that you like us. We have an NSF merch store if you want to wear a Texas Tank Watcher shirt or any other of our sweet NSF gear. And don't forget, we have the YouTube membership program with perks like Discord access, chat emoji, and members only preview videos. These weekly videos, as always, are a work in progress. So please let me know what you think in the comments. With your support, we'll keep making these videos and everything we do better with every release. And of course, thanks to Mary for her tireless efforts in documenting Starship development. Thank you, Mary. Okay, that's it for this week. Take it easy, everybody. Be excellent to each other.